studio, and today we're doing the Bugs and Critters Kit. So I'm so excited. So, if the sticker on your box does not say Bugs and Critters Cupcake Kit, you're probably looking for another video, so go ahead and head back to our YouTube channel and look for the video that's titled the same as whatever sticker is on your box. If it does say Bugs and Critters Kit, Welcome, you're in the right place. There are a couple things we need to go over before we actually start decorating them. So number one, we need our cupcakes baked. So your cake mix is right here, and if you're unsure of how to make it, there are instructions on the back of the cake mix box. We also have a live chat option if you're having any trouble, so you can feel free to shoot us a message if you have any questions like that. And then if you don't have a cupcake pan, it is okay because inside this box, there is a cupcake pan and there are also some cupcake liners for you. So you'll be able to do each design twice. But if you don't have a cupcake pan and you're just using this one, just know that you'll fill these up, let them bake, and then you'll have to repeat the process. That way you end up with 12 so you can make two of each design. And then the other thing about baking your cupcakes is we do want them at least room temperature or cool. If you try to put icing on freshly baked cupcakes, they're still really warm, so our icing turns into a hot soupy goopy mess. And we're going for bugs and critters today, not hot soupy goopy mess. So make sure they're at least room temperature or chilled before you actually start decorating them. Aside from that, you will need a pair of handy dandy scissors just to help cut some things open. And then I always recommend having some kind of towel like a kitchen towel or a hand towel or a paper towel, just something to put our open icings on and kind of keep the area a little bit more clean as we go. And then lastly, go ahead and wash your hands super duper good and then we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get all my stuff out of the box and we'll get right to it. So magic. So the first cupcake we're gonna start with is, ooh, I think we're gonna go ahead and do dirt worms because we gotta do dirt worms. So go ahead and pick out whichever cupcake feels like dirt and worms to you. And just a reminder, you will have enough to do two of each. I'm only going to go through the designs one time though. So while you're decorating along with me, if you would like, you can do one at a time and then check out one of our variation videos for our kits in case there's a different way you want to make your ladybug or anything like that. Or you can go ahead and make two at a time with me. Just I'm going to be doing one because I'm just showing you the designs, but there's enough for two of each. So, I think this one feels like a dirt and worms to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my black icing. Now, we want to save the lid because you guys, you guys, the lid's one of the coolest parts. It's actually the coupler ring that puts our tips on the bags or on the tubes later. And I just think that's super awesome that it comes with it. So, there's this little thing. All you're going to do is go boop. And then it is a coupler ring. So we don't need it for this one, but we are gonna go ahead and set this aside because we will need to attach things to our black icing later. So I'm gonna set that down, go ahead and remove the little seal on it. There we go, ta-da! And then it does not matter how you put icing on here. You can either do polka dots, swoopy doops, ziggy zaggies, whatever you're feeling like, or you can do one big swirly do. I'm gonna do a swirly, but about this much. And then this is open, black icing likes to get everywhere. Don't know why the black icing is the one that likes to travel in my world, so I'm gonna put it right here. And then inside our kit, we actually have a spatula. What color spatula did you get? You can let me know if you'd like, but I have the green one. And then this does not have to be the smoothest, prettiest cupcake ever. We're going to be covering a lot of this up with our design. It's just more of like a background color for everything else. So when I smooth things out, I like to start in the middle and go side to side. But instead of it being like a windshield wiper blade, it's more like the beginning of a pirate ship ride where it rocks a little bit up and then rocks a little bit back. Just a back and forth like that. That's what works for my brain. I will talk about other ways too because everybody's brain works differently. So what might feel good for me might not feel good for you and that's totally fine. But I'm gonna set it in the middle, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I'm gonna use the edge of it to just scrape around those edges, and ta-da. Now if that didn't feel good, another way you can do it is you can stick your spatula in the middle of your cupcake and twirl your cupcake around. I'm not as good at the twirling method, but that is a way you can do it. And if that didn't feel good either, treat your cupcake like it's a nervous cat. And you've been trying to get its attention all day and it's finally jumped in your lap you have to touch it 
but you don't want to freak it out. Very lightly pat your icing in the direction you would like it to go. We're going to be doing this a few times today, so just remember how to do this part. And I'm just going to lightly pat it until the whole top of my cupcake is covered. We don't have to worry about the sides. Don't worry about the wrapper. We're only focusing on the top. And it can be like this. It doesn't have to be super smooth because, again, this is more of a background color for everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my towel to wipe this off. Just because we, I, I am going to be smoothing some other things out later. So this way I don't forget and end up getting black icing in that design. Alrighty. So now I personally like to add my worms next. So we have a big bag of fun today and we're going to take out the gummy worms. Oh yes. Oh yes. Gummy worms are one of the best things in my world. Like they're so awesome. Oh, and there's a red and green one too. That's my favorite one to eat. Okay. So half of these are for one of my dirt and worms. The other half is for my other. So I so we have about seven. So this one's gonna have three worms. And you can just take them and stick them into your cupcake. For me, I'm going to put this one like this. I like my cupcakes to look like they have some movement going on. So instead of laying them all in a pretty row, I like to have them a bit chaotic, but that's just what I like. This is your cupcake. You're the one who's gonna be eating it. I want you to be happy with it. So if you would rather put them in nice, pretty little even rows, like, you know what? These gummy worms are standing in line or they're just chilling. You can totally do that instead of making them messy and chaotic like I'm going to do. But I'm going to have this one like this and then I'm actually going to take one of my other gummy worms and cut it in half where they meet. And then I'm going to stick one like this and stick one like this. So it looks like it's burrowing into the cupcake. <laughs> And then I think I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. But I'm gonna alternate them. Perfect, 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 perfect. And then I think it needs just a little more oomph to really emphasize that they are in the dirt. So I'm gonna take my green icing and I'm going to add a little bit of grass to this cupcake, just for a little extra color and spazazz for it. So inside my big bag of fun, we have these plastic things. These are our tips. We're going to take out the one that has a bunch of little holes in it. It looks like a thimble. It's actually a grass tip. And if you've decorated with me before, you know it's kind of rare for me to use the grass tip for grass, but we're using the grass tip for grass today, you guys. So I'm gonna take this off, pop out the thing. Go ahead and undo the seal. And then I'm going to take this tip, one with all the little holes, put it on top, and then I'm gonna take my ring and put it right on over it. Now, sometimes when you go to put your ring on, your tips will kind of like, oh no, no, they'll shift a bit. So you might need to kind of like finagle it around a bit and then apply a little bit of pressure to twist it on. Perfect. And so it's like this. And it does not need to be on there so tight that you can't take it off. It just needs to be on there tight enough that you can do this and it doesn't go flying across the room. So with this tip, the main thing is you don't wanna dip back down after you make your design. So what I mean by that is, a lot of people when using this tip have the tendency to squeeze and then before lifting up, dip in and then lift up. When you do that, you just get a weird blob. But if you hold it in the same spot for one, two, stop, and then lift up, you actually get a grass design with it. So it's a stop and then lift. And it's however many tufts of grass you want to add to this. Where's my trash can go? There it is. So I want, I'm, I just put them randomly to where I think it looks cute. Um, I usually like to have at least five tufts of grass, but it kind of depends on the day and how I'm feeling, how many I put on there. So just whatever feels right for you. It's creative time. Stay creative. That's the whole point. Have fun. And it's a good way if you cut your worms in half like I did, you can put a tuft where you cut them so you can't see that it's a separate gummy worm anymore. Just a little, little illusion work. 
with our dirt and worms. Yes. Now, if you don't want really trim grass, so if you don't want to go one, two, stop and lift, you can keep squeezing while you lift up for floppier grass. Or if you want it like, whoa, the HOA is really upset about your yard. And if you're, if you're young and you don't know what that means, your yard needs to be mowed. Uh, you can just spaghetti style it like this. Just whatever feels right for you. I also recommend trying this on a, on a towel and not your hand. It's just easier for me to do this and then be able to show you like, ta-da! If you do put icing on your hands, make sure you get it all off before you go touch anything. Just wash your hands and all that jazz. Yes! I'm just going to add a couple more. And ta-da! That's it, you guys. This is cupcake number one. We did dirt worms. See? See? Oh, I'm excited to eat it. I, I'm eyeballing this gummy worm. I really want it. But I'll wait. I'll wait. You're worth it. I'll wait. Sweet. So next, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do some butterflies. So go ahead and pick out whichever cupcake feels like a butterfly to you. If you're doing two cupcakes at a time, you can go ahead and pause me, I'll be here when you're done. But our next one is going to be our butterflies, butterflies in the sky. Um, so that's been stuck in my head for like three weeks. So I'm gonna pick this one, I'm gonna wipe off my hand and then I'll teach you how to make some butterflies. So I want my butterflies flying high in the sky. So I'm going to use blue icing. However, if your butterflies are in space or maybe they're in Elden Ring, you could have an all red background instead. You could also, later on, we're going to be making a ladybug. So if you do that, keep that in mind that some of this red is for a ladybug. Or you could just make your ladybug blue instead if you want. Feel free to put your own spin on it. But I'm going to do blue. And I'm going to do the same thing we just did, where I'm going to put some icing down and then I'm going to smooth it out. Again, it does not have to be super duper perfect because our butterflies are going to take up quite a bit of space. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this out. You don't need it right now but I will need it later. So I'm gonna set it down, take the seal off and go ahead and smooth my cupcake out. <laughs> Ta -da, imagine. Alrighty, so now we need some butterflies. So inside my bag of fun, we have marshmallows. Yes, I love, I love the mellows. Love the mellows. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them open. And one marshmallow equals two butterfly wings. So I like to have a double set of wings. So two marshmallows is one butterfly. I'm just going to put two butterflies on here. However, you can put more on there if you want. You have enough marshmallows to do that if you want. I mean, you, can, you can put some more butterflies. So how I'm gonna make the butterfly wings is you see our mellows? We wanna cut them in half, but we don't wanna cut them in half this way or this way. We wanna turn them to where they're like a diamond and cut them corner to corner. When you do that, it makes these little petal divots that are really cute for wings. And also if you ever need to make some flower cupcakes, we do have a flower cupcake kit and we make an entire flower out of these marshmallows. So just you have options for ways to play with them. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut another one. And then I like to place them with that little divot facing up towards the sky. <sighs> So I'm just gonna put one more on there, but again, you could probably put another two or three on there if you wanted to. The option is there if you want to. Don't feel like you can't. Okay, I'm gonna have this one go this way. Perfect. And then for me personally, I like to use the black icing for like the head and the swirly antennas of my butterflies. I tend to make them look a little bit cartoony because I am a huge fan of cartoons. I just, I love cartoons and animation and just art in general. So I usually kind of put that same kind of vibe to a lot of my cutesy or cupcakes. But if you don't want them to look cartoony, you can keep the little heads and stuff really small and you don't have to do the swirly antennas if you don't want to. 
But since I like the black icing, but you could use red or green instead if you'd like, I'm going to use this one. So this tip is just a circle. We're gonna be using it a few times. It's really good for writing and for drawing. So I'm going to stick it on my black, get my little ring, try not to throw my ring across the room, and it's all good to go. So now all I'm gonna do is draw. So which way do I want them going? I want them going like this. So I make a line down the middle, like so. And you can leave them like that. Or if you want them a little more cutesy and cartoony, just make a blob. So I squeeze in the same spot for about three seconds. And then I just draw a little swirl for the antennas. So that, that one I need to look. <laughs> I can't do that one backwards. Ta -da! And there you go, that's it. If you would like, you could rinse this out and also put it on your red or green and then add little polka dots or stripes on your wings if you want a little bit more color going on there. But that's a butterfly. <laughs> Dang, we are moving on through. So let's go ahead and do our third cupcake. And I mean, we've done bugs so far. So I think we should do a ladybug, which I love our ladybug. Okay, so for a ladybug, we're gonna need our red icing. So same thing as last time. If you're doing two at a time, you need to pause me. Go ahead, I'll be here when you get back. But I'm going to take the red so I want my ladybug to be red. But if you made your ladybug a different color, I would love to see it. You can always send us your pictures. I'm always happy to see what you guys do. I mean, I think this is so awesome because we're all like doing the same thing. But to me, it's just art that you can eat and art is unique just like you are. So even though we're all doing the same thing, like everybody puts their own spin and personality to it. And I think it's really freaking cool. So if you would like to send us your creations, I would love to see them if you followed me step by step or if you did your own variation. Like, I'm just, I'm just happy you're here doing this with me. But now, back to our programming. We've got the red icing. I'm gonna take off the thingy. And then no tip, no tip, not yours. So, on my cupcake, we want to leave a space this big in the middle. So, the way I remember to do that is I make a line. And then I make another. Now it's okay if it goes a little bloop like that. And then I'm going to fill it in. And we will need about like that much. Like I still have a ton of icing in here. You're not going to use all of your red icing for your cupcakes. We will need it for a tongue for our frog later and a flower for our caterpillars later. So just keep that in mind when you're squeezing it out. Okay. So then spatula time, make sure there's nothing on it. And then this time I'm gonna use the edge of it and I'm very lightly gonna scrape it. So I'm not like, Ugh. it's just like, a, oh. like you're lightly shaving the top of it. Make sure I don't have any of my dog's hair on there. All right, and then I'm gonna lightly shave the top. And the reason I'm doing this is because it then makes it look like one whole connected piece instead of two separate ones. See? So I'm going to do the same thing. You can also lightly pet your icing if you want it to go. It's a very light <laughs> kind of vibe to it. Yes, I'm happy with this. Yeah! I kind of like that one of the wings is smaller. I feel like this would be me as a ladybug, except I would also somehow be like neon rainbow with like a skull. <laughs> so now we need our black icing and I'm going to go ahead and take this tip off, but just keep, keep in mind where it is because we will be putting it right back on it a little bit, but I don't need it on for this part. And I think it's easier if you don't have it on for this. So where that gap is, I'm going to put a line. And then I want this part to be my head. So I'm going to take my icing and squeeze it in the same spot. One, two, three, stop and pull back. Wipe off my spatula. 
and then lightly feather pet that. I'm not flattening it, but I'm not, I don't want it as Hershey Kiss, if that makes sense. I want it like this. Alrighty. So now we're going to take this tip, tip back on, and it is time to add polka dots. So you can do a bunch of tiny little dots if you'd like, or if you want to get creative with it, you could draw shapes. You could make your ladybug spots be stars or hearts or weird faces all over your ladybug. Whatever you feel like. Um, I'm, go I'm not going to do little polka dots, but I'm going to do like some kind of cattywampus circles going on. So if you want just a little dot, it could be like that. But I'm going to draw a circle. I am getting black icing. I told you it travels. I'm getting black icing everywhere. And when your icing starts to get kind of hard to come out, just fold it down like it's toothpaste. We will need a little, like just a little bit of black for other cupcakes, but it's just for face parts. So just for eyes and mouths. We won't need as much as we're using on this one. So just something to keep in mind. All right, all right, all right, all right. So now we need eyeballs. So inside the bag of fun, we have some six lips. So my ladybug has two eyes. If your ladybug has three eyes, that's awesome. Why does your ladybug have three eyes? I need to know. But I'm just going to take two. And again, I like the cartoony vibe. So when I put mine on, I put them close together. If you want them to look less cartoony, spread them out more. Make sense? I hope so. So I'm going to stick mine in right into my icing. And then you've got some more options for cartoonifying it or decartoonifying it. So since I like cartoony, I make my ladybug cross eyes like that. If you don't want it, if you still like them close together, but you're like, I don't really want cross eye, just put your pupils right in the center. It's either way is super cute. I like cross-eyed vibe. <laughs> yes. And then I like the antennas, so I just pick a spot on my ladybug's back, starting from the head, to make a little swirly antenna on each side. That's just what I like. And there we go, you guys. We have ladybugs. High five. I'm going to wash my hands here in a second. But ladybugs. So we're going to go ahead and move on. Huh. Hmm. I think we will do our snail next. So go ahead and pick out whatever cupcake feels like a snail. And then if you have any icing on your hands like I do, go ahead and wash your hands and then make sure they're super duper dry because we're going to start playing with fondant next. And fondant, whenever it gets water, Water makes fondant sticky, so if your hands are really wet and you're trying to mush it up, it's still going to work, but it's going to create this weird feeling and texture going on that we don't really need. So just wash your hands nice and good so we don't stain the fondant, and then make sure they're really dry. I'll be back. And we're back. So the first part of this cupcake, I'm actually, let's go ahead and make our snail. We just washed our hands. This way we don't get green icing on them. So for our snail, we have yellow fondant and orange fondant. So I like to make my snail yellow and the shell orange. You can reverse it if you'd like. Um, the green fondant is actually for our frog later, but if you would rather have an orange or yellow frog and use green for your snail, you can also do that. I'm a fan of options, you guys. Feel free to put your own spins on it, but I'm gonna do yellow and orange, and I'm gonna start with my snail's body. So I'm gonna cut this open. And then I like to just take my scissors and slide down the middle. Oh, I'm glad there's a table there. <laughs> so just so I remember, because I want two snails and then I also use yellow on my caterpillars, I am going to go ahead and cut this into four portions. So this is one snail. This is my second snail, and these are for my caterpillars. 
So I'm gonna take three of these chunks and set them aside and just work with this one. Now your fondant should be nice and soft, but I always like to play with it with my hands first. And then we're gonna roll a tube snake. If you've never played with fondant before, it is basically Play-Doh you can eat. So roll it into a roll, and then tube snake. Now it doesn't have to be like the world's longest tube snake. I want it about like this. And then I'm gonna pick one end. Okay, so we got a tube snake. Lift and then hitch. So again, tube snake, lift and curve or pinch. And then I want it to look more like, like so I don't think you'll be surprised by this, but I really like snails. Like snails are one of my favorite things. I just I always have. And they have like that kind of travel motion going on. So I want that to reflect in this. So I'm going to take my pincher fingers and I'm not pinching the whole thing. I'm just going to the edge. Yes, I'm pinching it out. To me, it makes it look more like my snail is traveling across the cupcake by doing this. But if you don't like that look, again, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to set him down like this. I guess I'll set him here so you can see him. And I'm going to go ahead and make my shot. So again, it's the same thing as last time because I'm using this color for my caterpillars too. I'm going to portion this out the exact same way I did my yellow. If you traded out your yellow or your orange for the green instead, just portion it the same way too. We're going to cut it into fourths. They don't have to be exact or perfect. I'm going to set them aside. And then this one's going to be my snail. And this time we are going to make a longer tube snake. So mush it up. Roll it. Yes. And when I roll, I like to start in the middle and then slowly work my fingers out. I have a really bad habit of just doing that and not explaining it, but that's just how I like to roll things. And about this long should be good. And then we're just going to spiral it up. So pick an end and then wrap it up. Ta-da! Alrighty, so I'm gonna set that there. We'll worry about attaching them after we have our icing on our cupcake because we need something for our snail to stick to. So I like to make grass. So I go back to the green and I already have that thimble tip still on there. So it's up to you again if you wanna do the short trim grass with the one, two, stop and lift. If you wanna do the floppy grass where you keep squeezing while you lift up so it's like, oh. Or if you want the crazy yard grass where you're like, blah, 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 blah. whatever feels right to you, go ahead and cover the whole top of your cupcake in that. I'm going to do the short and trim grass today. Alrighty. Magic! Yeah! So now it's time to attach our snail. So I like to put our snail, or my snail, right in the middle. You can hop them off to the side if you want. And the reason we also left this a thicker tube snake versus a thin one is it's a lot easier for it to stand up when it's a bit thicker like this. When there's more like even weight distribution going on. And then I'm going to just put a little divot in my snail, which if you would rather do that before you put it on the cupcake like I just did, the it. But I just put a little divot down the middle so it's somewhere I can stick my shell and you have some options. You can either get your shell wet and then put it on there or you can put a very tiny, tiny strip of icing with that, with that circle tip, the one we used for our ladybug's polka dots, to just give it a little extra support too. Mine seems to be sticking just fine. As I say that, it falls over. <laughs> it's what it is. Don't shake your cupcake, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little strip and I don't want a very big strip because I don't want it to sandwich out. I just kind of want to help it hold it there. Yes, there we go. And now it is time for a face. So you can put whatever kind of face you want. I like to do, for my snail, I usually just do two eyes and some little antennas. So I'll show you what I mean. But I go one, one for my eyes. I like them on the side of the head. I'm a big fan of the never ending story and it kind of makes me think of the racing snail. So that's why I do it. 
And then for my antennas, I hold it in the same spot and do one, two, three, stop and lift. It gives us this kind of Hershey kiss point going on. Just to give our snail a bit more character. He looks like a storybook snail, I love him. <laughs> and there we go. That's a snail, you guys. I'm gonna set this down before I just throw it. <laughs> oh my gosh, we are moving so fast. We only have two more cupcakes left. Well, let's go ahead and do our other caterpillars. So, for this one, I actually like to have my caterpillars on some leaves. So I'm gonna take my my <laughs> my grass tip off. I was like the, the thimble, <laughs> and then we have a tip that looks like this. It looks like a V or an alligator mouth, depending on how you're looking at it. I'm gonna put it on my green. All right, so with this leaf tip, you want to hold it like it's an alligator mouth, like it is going to throw up icing all over your cupcake. And then we're going to squeeze one, two, three, very similar to our grass, stop and pull straight back. If you do not stop before you pull, it will still get you a leaf, but it'll be much more like a potted plant kind of leaf. So if that's more your speed, go for it. But I like to do the one, two, three, stop and pull. And then I'm gonna add a flower to this. So I'm not really gonna worry about the middle. I'll cover that up. So I'm just going to put leaves on the edge of my cupcake. If you would rather start in the middle, you totally can. My brain just always goes to the side of the cupcake. So that's where I always start. It's just where I'm comfortable doing it. And I don't wanna use all of this way I make sure I have enough green for everything else I am going to leave a hole in the middle plus I think it kind of makes it look a bit like bark especially if you have the chocolate cupcakes for this one um kind of looks more like they're like in a bush or in a tree no and I'm going to do a couple more because I don't want my flower that big so I did about two rows of leaves Okay, so caterpillar time. Actually, let's go ahead and do our flower. I lied, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I just get excited. So I'm gonna take my red icing and we have one tip we haven't used yet. It is a circle with a bunch of spikies. This is an open star tip and I'm going to use it for my flower. But you've got some options for your flower. So you can either hold it in the same spot. Let me grab a thing here and go one, two, three, four, five, and leave it like that. Or you could then take a white six slit because there are extra. I couldn't help it, you guys. But you could take a white six slit and stick it right in the middle to make a flower that way. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little rosette. So what's gonna happen with the rosette is you make a blob, you keep squeezing, you come to the side of your blob and then you draw a circle around it. So it makes sense as it goes. So blob, come to the side, draw a circle, stop, and then pull. Yes, little rosette. And then I've got some gaps around it, but I'm gonna put my color caterpillars around it. My color pillars, my caterpillars around it. I was also the kid that always like just had caterpillars on them in the summer. I was that kid. <laughs> so, caterpillars. We've got two different caterpillars for this one cupcake. Now, if you would like to see both designs, and then if you're like, no, I just want that one type of caterpillar, I'm totally okay. So if you wanna pause here and see what I'm doing before you decide what you put on there, totally fine. Get all this off my hands. So I'm going to take these, one chunk of each. I'm actually gonna cut these in half. So this will be for my second one. And then for all of these, I, I don't ever pay attention to how much it is. I really don't. I don't wanna, I don't wanna lie and tell you it's a specific amount, but I just rip off little chunks. Okay, so I got five chunks. And I got five. So I got five and five. And I'm gonna roll each chunk into a ball. <laughs> 
Ta -da! And then it does not matter which way you put them on there. But the whole idea with this caterpillar, and if you would like to do it on your table first before putting it on the cupcake, is that it's alternating different little balls. So it can be however long or short you want it to be. If you're like, I don't need all of these. That's fine. You don't have to use all the ones that you rolled out. I'm actually probably not going to use, well, I'm not going to use those now. I'm not going to use those three. I'm going to pick those up there because we don't want to leave stuff on the floor. Clean up our messes. Be responsible and polite. It might be a struggle. <laughs> they might be trying to escape, <laughs> but we're going to pick them up. And then I just put them on. So this way, this way, this way. And I'm just sticking them right into that green icing. And I think I do want one more orange, but I want it a little smaller. Perfect. Like these. So then for our caterpillar's face, I do the same thing we did with the snail, except instead of putting the eyeballs to the side of the head, I move them more forward. And then I add a little smiley face, but maybe your caterpillar is like, I'm tired. Your caterpillar could be a tired caterpillar if you want. It's your caterpillar. And then I'm going to do the antenna thing. So I'm going to go one, two, three, stop and lift. One, two, three, stop and lift. Then we have our first pillar. Alrighty, so our second caterpillar. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab this. And then I usually do this at the same time and then cut it in half so it's ready to go for my next cupcake. But if you're unsure if you want to do this, go ahead and do what we just did. Cut it in half. And remember, this is for your other caterpillar. That's this style. But we're going to tie-dye it. Let me move that cupcake. There we go. So sandwich them together, squish them, and then twist them a few times. And then I like to moosh them. When I say moosh them, you've actually got to like get your... Get your mooshes in, because if you just go squeeze, squeeze, like nothing happens. You've actually got to mix it up a little bit. And then I just want it tie-dye, so I just do this until I think it looks cool. If you do keep mixing it up over and over and over, it is eventually going to turn into one color. I want to have some multiple colors going on. So I'm personally very excited about this that's going on right now. I love tie-dye. And then I'm going to roll it like a tube snake, but I'm going to keep it a thick tube snake instead of a skinny one. Yes. And then you can just put it on there like that and then put your faces and stuff on it. But I want this caterpillar to look like a fuzzy caterpillar because those were always super cool. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm not cutting it in half, which the best part about Fauna is if you do that, you can just ball it back up and reshape it, or you can just no 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 no. Ta -da! But I'm going to take my scissors like this, so I'm not cutting all the way through it. I'm just cutting the edges, and I like to start with my edges and then go to the other side. So freaking cool. Oh my gosh. And then again, you can stop here, but then I like to go on the top, so I put my scissors this way. And if you want more fuzz going on than this, just make your, your spaces shorter. So you can go back and cut the pinches that you cut to give it more fuzziness if you'd like. You can also cut the ones on the top the other direction, which is what I'm doing now. And we have a fuzzy caterpillar. <laughs> so then I'm just going to put it on the other side. Add my face and antennas. And there we go, you guys. It's the caterpillars. They're so cute. Okay, okay, I'm gonna set them over here. And, 
oh my goodness, it's time for our last one. <laughs> well, our last cupcake is our critter. It is a frog, and I know, big surprise, I love frogs. <laughs> is the animal kind of weird and misunderstood? If so, I love it. <laughs> Platypus, platypus all the way. But I'm going to take my cupcake, and it does not matter what color of icing you put on here. If you're starting to get concerned about having enough green for your other cupcakes, then don't use green. Use black or red. Um, I'm actually going to use red. And we very, we need a very, very, very small amount on this cupcake. So I'm just going to go like that. I even left the tip on there. And then it doesn't matter if your spatula is wiped off or not, because we're not going to see this at all. All this is is glue for our fondant that's about to happen. So I this time, instead of the boo 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 boo, I'm going to just kind of feather pet it. And it doesn't even have to cover the whole thing. Like, this is fine. Ooh, this looks like very, like, volcanic. And I dig it. Even though um, volcanoes are scary. But this, this looks pretty cool. You can make... Ooh, you can do a lot of cool things with this. Anyway, can you tell I'm a creative? <laughs> I'm going to grab my green fondant. And all of our green is for our frog. So I'm going to cut it in half. One is for one frog. One is for the other. <laughs> okay, so one's aside, and then I am going to cut just a teeny tiny bit right here and save that. It is still for this part of the frog, but it's for another piece. And then the rest of this, we're going to ball it up. Now, if you have a rolling pin at home, you can use a rolling pin for this part. Um, if you have some powdered sugar or even like a little bit of flour, powdered sugar will make it taste better, but you could use flour. Um, you can put that on your surface and then roll your fondant out. It'll help it not stick to whatever your work surface is. If you don't have a rolling pin, because I know when I first started decorating, I didn't have any of the tools. Like I didn't have a rolling pin. I didn't have tips. I did the whole cutting the bags thing to get different shapes. My first rose nail was a bottle cap um, hot glued with a Q-tip. So if you don't have a rolling pen or tools like that, also Sharpies work in a pinch or bottles, um, you can make a ball and then flatten it. I'm, I'm giving it a good and then I'm gonna take my fingers, pinch it out to make it bigger. Now, if you look, it's got this fingerprint texture going on, which could be a really cool design incorporation for your frog if you want it. But I'm not going for that today. So what I'm going to do is I do think this is easier done on a table, but I want you to be able to see what's going on. So it's going to be easier for me to use my hand. But this part, I recommend if you're going this route, do it on a table. Take it. Take this part of your hand and apply pressure and go in circles. And it makes a buffer for your fondant and flattens it out like a rolling pen would. So if you don't have one, that is a workaround to do it. And then I'm going to lay it on top of my cupcake. Perfect. And then you can either tuck these little pieces that are hanging off, just tuck them under, or take a pair of scissors and go around and cut them off. We just want the top covered. And then I like to give it a good like like squeeze, 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 squeeze around. Yes. Okay. And now the piece I cut off, I can add to that other little piece. So we are going to go ahead and do the parts with our black icing first. So we have to do less back and forth. So I want my frog's face. So in the center, I'm going to make two lines for the frog nose. You can do straight lines or you can do cattywampus lines, whatever feels right. You could even do cir circles instead. Yes. And then my frog's eyes are going to go up here, by the way. So then I like to do a <laughs> squiggle smiley face because again, cartoon fan. But if you would rather your frog is like, <gasps> 
you can do that. Or your frog's like, what? You can do that too. I like to make squiggles though. So it's like I'm drawing a roller coaster. And then I usually put a little shimmer. Yes. So then we're gonna take that piece that we cut off, mush it up, and then we're gonna rip it in half and roll two balls. All right, this is where things get kind of cool. So then I'm gonna take two white six slits and I'm going to stick one and I'm gonna push it into the bonnet. So what's gonna happen is then I'm going to attach them so it makes my frog like this. You can also fan your fondant down your six slit like its eyes are like, like it's sleepy. But I don't want a sleepy frog, but you can do that. Sweet. And then we need just a tiny bit of black icing where I want to put them just so they stick. You can use water instead if you'd like. I just usually go with the icing. And I'm not too worried about this one sandwiching out. I kind of think it gives them more character, honestly. Sweet. And then it's whatever kind of pupils you want. I usually just do two polka dots in the center. And we're almost done. So this is the last part that I need my black icing for, for this design. So I'm actually going to go rinse out my tip. Usually with the tips, what I'll tell you to do is put them on your next color, squeeze for about five seconds and it'll push them all out. But the black icing, is a little, it takes a lot longer to do that. So I do recommend that you just take this tip off and go rinse it in the sink for a little bit. And then we're gonna put it on our blue to give some more color and whatnot to our frog. Like that, this is what we're doing. So I'll be back. Sweet. So my tip is ready to go. So I like to give it kind of freckles and the, again, these can be shapes. You could do hearts instead if you want. You could also use the red instead if you want. I like really tiny polka dots with a few big like ovals thrown in for my little freckly spots for my frog. And then I am going to put some on the eyeballs too. It helps reconnect the whole design, I think. And then I usually put one right here as well. Yes. Put one right here. You can also put a line behind these eyes for an extra support system to help hold them up as well. Oh my gosh, yes! Ta -da! And then, I'm gonna use the leaf tip. This time I am just gonna squeeze it out and put it on my red for my frog's tummy. So just boop, 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 boop. Perfect. And just squeeze it till you can't see red anymore. So this is what happened. Makes a cool tie-dye thing going on. I like it. And then for the tongue, I'm just going to do one, two, three, stop and pull some alligator mouth. I like to come to the opposite corner and pull. Yes. So you can stop here, but you have one more option. You can take your black icing. So where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Uh -huh. And you can put the tip back on, or you can even just get a little dot. Put it on your tongue, or I just put some on my finger, and then use my scissors to get it. And then you can go back to those marshmallows and do that trick we learned earlier, where we cut it corner to corner. And I'm actually going to cut a little, because I want this really tiny, so I'm going to cut that part off and just keep like the pointed part of my marshmallow, if that makes sense. And then squish it a little. If you wanted to put a fly on your frog's tongue, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but the option is there. And oh my gosh, you guys are done. High five. And ta -da! that's it, you guys. It's a Bugs and Critters cupcake kit. Yes. 
Thank you so much for coming today. I hope that you had fun. I know that I did, but I, I just, I always have fun with it. And I hope that you enjoy eating your awesome Bugs and Critters creations. If you would like to send us pictures of your creations, I personally always love to see them. We've already talked about this, but everybody puts their own spin on it. It's awesome. So whether you decorate it along with me or you put your own spin on it, either way, I would love to see what creative things you came up with. So you can always send them to us. There's a little booklet in your kickbox kit box that has a QR code and you can go in there and maybe become part of our baking club. If you would just like to see what other stuff we have because we also have round cakes and square cake designs, you can check out our website which is mymakestudio.com and if you just kind of want to see what we're up to like on the day to day, our Facebook which is at mymakestudio and uh, Instagram which is at mymakestudio are also good places to check out just new and upcoming things and if you didn't know we're Colorado based so if you just kind of want to see what's going on in our lives with that those are good places to check out and then I mean of course we have one because it's all the rage right now we have a TikTok it is at mymakestudio and for our TikTok it's just kind of more like if you want to see what me and my silly dog are up to or random little art projects and stuff that's a good place to check out too but thank you guys so much for coming i really do hope you had a good time and that you enjoy eating them and as always stay creative <laughs>